Welcome. This is lecture 57. In this lecture, we look at Cojoule complexes, how they are constructed using a mapping cone. We will start with looking at a mapping cone, then we will define Cojoule complexes uh, as a mapping cone. Okay, so, uh, what we will quickly review what we how we define complexes, and then we will now uh, define maps between complexes and then we will talk about mapping cones and then so that is the plan for this lecture. Okay. So, recall that a complex of R modules is a sequence of R modules and R module homomorphisms. So, m dot okay. So, it is a sequence uh, which goes you know, m 0 then m 1 maps to m 0 m 2 maps to m 1 okay. and sometimes you will have to refer to the maps. So, we will just label them. So, uh, so and why is it a complex? So, uh, that image of mu i, so the map from m i to m i minus 1, its image is in the kernel of the next map, kernel of mu i minus 1. Okay. So, or equivalently composition of two consecutive maps is 0. Remember the composition is mu i first and then mu i minus 1. Okay. So, it is uh, 0. And uh, uh, in principle, one does not have to have a 0 here, you could go uh, even to infinity on the right side, but the complexes that we will consider in this course uh, will always end somewhere and then it is 0 afterwards. Okay. So, we will just consider only such complexes. Okay. The homology of a complex is the ith homology H i. Uh, is the kernel of uh, mu i, which is the map going from m i modulo the image of the uh, previous map mu i plus 1. Okay. So, remember that image of mu i plus 1 is always inside the kernel of mu i. So, the quotient uh, the module is called the homology of this complex, the ith homology of this complex. Okay. And we can at this point we can think of the last map from mu m 0 to 0, you can think of it as the map mu 0 and a, as a 0 map okay. and hence uh, h 0 of this complex would be kernel of uh, mu 0, uh, this should be mu 0 uh, mod, uh, so mu z, kernel of mu 0 is all of m 0 and kernel of mu 1 is just uh, an image of mu 1 is just the image of mu 1. So, m 0 mod the image of mu 1 which is what is called what we call the co kernel of mu 1. So, remember that the last the h 0 of such a complex is a co kernel of this last map m 1 to m 0. If uh, we have two complexes okay, f with where we denote the maps by small f and g where we denote the maps by small g, if they are complexes as above, so ending at some 0 and then 0 modules are 0 afterwards, a map of complexes is a collection of R module homomorphism from each F i to corresponding G i. So, F i to G i, F i minus 1 to G i minus 1 and so on on both sides. Okay. Such that the following diagram commutes. Okay. What does that mean to say diagram commutes? It means that between any pair of points, all the arrows going from one to the other are I mean, give the same function. So, in this case is only one, one to check which is from F i to G i minus 1 there are two paths f i to f i minus 1 to g i minus 1 and f i to g i to g i minus 1. So, along the sides of this rectangle there are two, one gets two different paths and they those two functions agree. So, in other words uh, g i alpha i which is a path down first and then to the right that is the same as right first and then down alpha i minus 1 f i. So, these two composites are the same that is what uh, diagram commutes means and that is what it means in this context of a map of complexes. Okay. So, if you have a map of complexes, then it induces a map in homology that is a map alpha from f to g induces a map which we will denote by h i of alpha from h the ith homology of f to the ith homology of g. Okay. So, uh, we will so these proofs are done using what is called a diagram chasing. So we'll just do the diagram chasing on this diagram itself. Okay. So we need to find an element. We need to look for elements in the kernel here. 
that is kernel of fi mod image of fi plus 1 okay. and we need to get them to an element in kernel of gi mod image of gi plus 1. So, from the kernel in the top row at fi to the to the homology of the bottom row uh, that is inside gi. Okay. So, we will do this by doing what is called a diagram chasing. So, let us pick an a in kernel of fi. Okay. Remember elements of homology are kernel mod image. So, they are represented by the residue classes of elements of the kernel going modulo images of the previous image uh, the submodule image of the previous map. So, we will just take an element in the kernel ok. So, kernel of f i so it is in kernel. So, it just means that a goes to the 0. So, the, the things that I mark in red are the elements that we pick and s we will see how the elements progress in this diagram chase ok. So, a goes to 0 that is what we have written f i of a is 0. Now, define b to be the image of a under alpha i ok. Now, because the diagram commutes b must go to 0 in g i minus 1. So, start from a it goes to, I mean chose a inside f we chose a inside f kernel of f i. So, it went to 0 here and then came to 0 here. So, along top and right we have we get 0 inside this g i minus 1. Therefore, on the uh, uh, bottom I mean left and bottom also one should get this. So, b i must be in the kernel of uh, uh, kernel of g i b must be in the kernel of g i ok. So, in other words what we just observe is that alpha i maps the kernel of f i inside the kernel of g i ok. So, we can think of this as a map alpha i restricted to kernel of f i ok. Now, let us let us check what happens under this map to image of f i minus 1 ok. Remember that image of f i minus 1 is inside the kernel of f i ok. So, under this map what what would happen to f image of f i minus 1 ok. So, now let us take let now let us assume that a is in the image of the previous map ok. So, in other words a is f i plus 1 of some a 1 this a is the image of this a 1. Okay. Then because of the commutativity of the diagram one can immediately see that this b ok which is also g i plus 1 applied to alpha i plus 1 of a 1. In other words b is in the image of g i plus 1. So, if a is the image of this map the top row map then so is this b that is the conclusion. In other words under this map alpha i restricted to this kernel image of f i goes inside a image of f i plus 1 goes inside the image of g i plus 1 ok. So, now what do we have? We have a map from the kernel in the top row to the kernel in the bottom row under which the image in the top row goes inside the image of the bottom row ok. When we uh, this is so now this gives a map from kernel mod image on the top row to kernel mod image in the bottom row and that is exactly what h i of f to h i of g is. So, in, so what that is the end of the proof. So, the conclusion uh, is that any map of complexes through this diagram chases, chasing show, gives a, a map in homology ok. So, now uh, we want to uh, look at uh, this thing called mapping cones which is uh, uh, a way ok. So, here is a motivation or our aim. So, we have given a map map of complexes. So, we have these maps now ok. We would like to fit them into some exact sequence like this. So, this is the map at, this is the map in homology at the ith level. So, this is at the ith level ok. This is the map in homology at the i minus 1th level and we would like to put them in such a long exact sequence because it would help us uh, conclude various things. So, this is again uh, a post facto justification we would like to put them like this in a nice way and what does what, what do we exactly mean by nicely. So, we would like to describe these m i in such a way that we can say something about the maps alpha i or they are somehow in some constructed in some natural way ok. We, I mean, there is no definition as to what exactly we should uh, um, uh, I mean how what exactly the natural way is, but we will describe one such thing called mapping cones ok. So, the aim is to understand the map of I mean 
the induced map in homology, how does it fit together? What is its kernel and co-kernel? Okay, so that these things would be clarified uh, with, if you put them in a nice exact sequence like this. So the aim is to construct such a nice exact sequence. Okay. So this is what we start with. So we are now going to describe the construction of the mapping cone. Uh, we have a complex F on the top row, complex G in the bottom row, and I have drawn it from the rightmost end, where F0 to G0, and then it's towards to its right, these are all zero modules. Okay. So we have a map like this. Okay. So now we would like to describe what is called the mapping cone of this map of complexes. Okay. So here is the thing, let's, let's see how this was constructed. So now let's look at G0 here. Let's look at G0. Okay. There are two maps coming from uh, to G0. Okay. One from F0 and one from G1. Okay. So F0 and G1 map to G0. And alpha 0, F, F0 to G0 is alpha 0 and G1 to G0 is G1. So in this mapping cone, we put this here. G1 plus F0 and from the first factor we use the map G1, for the second factor which is F0 we use alpha 0. Okay. So that just came directly from this. Okay. So here is a, I mean, here is G0, we just map uh, to uh, uh, all the modules that map into this which is from the F complex and the G complex, one module each. So that is what we have here. Okay. So from G1 to G0 is G1, the map G1 and F0 to G0 is alpha 0. Now we have, now, now in the second position of this complex, the new complex, we have G1 plus uh, F0, so the things on this diagonal like this, okay, G1 plus F0, and there are two modules behind them which map to these, that is there is G2, there is G2, and then there is F1. Okay. F1 maps to G1 and F0, okay, so the, the F1 maps to F0 through the map little f1 to G1 through the map alpha1 and G2 maps to G1 through the map G2, little g2. Okay. So let us put that thing together here. So this is written as like a matrix but it is not exactly a matrix, it is just a convenient way of writing because it is a map from a direct sum. So G2 direct sum G1, uh, G2 direct sum F1 to G1 direct sum F, uh, F0. From the first part here to the first part here, which is G2, uh, G2 to G1, we have a map G2. Then from the first part here to F0, the second part here, there is no map, so it is 0. From F1, which is the second part here, to the first summand, which is G1, there is a map alpha 1, so we have this. And uh, from F1 to F0, there is a map uh, little f1, but we just put a minus sign and we will see why this is needed. Okay. So, we will, okay. so we just put a minus, the only thing you keep in mind is that there is a minus sign there. Okay. Similarly, from uh, we have G2 direct sum F1, the map would be from G3 direct sum F2 and from G3 direct sum F2, G3 to G2 there is a G3 map, G3 to F1 there is no map, F2 to G2 there is an alpha 2 and F2 to F1 we put a F we have a map F2, but uh, we, we use that with a minus sign. Okay. So now we have a, I mean, we have this and the point is that, so this I just copied it. Okay. This is the same complex that we just described in the previous page. Okay. The point is that this is a complex, why? So let us check this. So which means we should check that this map here, this map, uh, this map here. Uh, the square, uh, the two, I mean, the G2 to G, G2 direct sum F1 to G1 direct sum F0. This map here to the next map, the composite should be 0. So remember, the maps are applied in the opposite order. This is the one that is applied first and then uh, this 2 by 1, uh, sorry, this 1 by 2 looking matrix. So this is the composition and one can immediately check that because of the, because of the diagram commutes G1 alpha 1 equals alpha 0 F1. And because we introduced a minus sign, they cancel each other and we get zero map. And similarly here also, okay. The 
the diagram commutes. So, G 2 alpha 2 equals alpha 1 f 2, but we introduced a minus sign precisely to cancel this and so we get 0 in this, in this part and G 2 G 3 is anyway 0 because it is a com complex and f 1 f 2 is also 0 because it is a complex and so on to the left. Okay. So, except at this at the rightmost place where you know you one has to multiply a matrix like this rest of it is all like these two by two. these are not matrices but you know, two fact two summons on both from each one of those complexes so we get this so this is a complex okay so now we will need to work with this complex a little bit uh, we will write delta i for these maps so delta so this is g0 here this is uh, uh, this is c0 this thing here is c1 G2 directs from F1, F1 is uh, C2. So, the index of G, the subscript for G is the one which describes the subscript for C. Okay. So, this is how. Okay. So, so, the map uh, we describe as uh, delta i. So, now what we have constructed, I mean from what we have constructed, we have what is called a short exact sequence of complexes. Okay, so, I, I will not define it, I mean I will just describe, I will describe these things in this context, but we will do an exercise which describes it in, uh, in full generality. Okay. okay. So, what is that, what exactly do we mean? Okay. What, actually, what are these maps first of all? The vertical maps, the g, the vertical maps little g and vertical maps f i and here minus f i, they were given to us. These delta i's were constructed as uh, I mean in the previous pages. Okay. So, the, now we have to describe the horizontal maps. The, this is the inclusion in the first summand. Okay. Remember g i sits c i is g i direct sum f i minus 1. So, the, the inclusion from g i to c i is the inclusion as the first summand and c i to f i minus 1 is the projection to the second summand. Okay. So, therefore, the rows are exact. Okay. So, that is what here we mean. So, this is important rows are exact and all the squares in these commute ok. That is because ok in other word we are saying is that ok we will see it in a minute ok. I mean rows commute because one can check explicitly uh, because the first factor if you go here and apply delta it is the same thing as applying g because nothing happens to the second and so it is so one can write down from those matrices and check that the uh, all the squares commute. Now, here is a general fact about short exact sequence of complexes. So, we will make a proper definition of this etcetera and prove this fact uh, in this generality uh, in the exercises. Okay. So, we for every short exact sequence of complexes, there is an exact sequence in homology. So, i homology here, i homology here, i homology here. So, h i h i h i, then i minus 1 here, i minus 1 here, i minus 1 here those three things and then i minus 2 three things and so on ok. So, this is this is a general fact we will uh, ok. So, we will prove this just for this mapping cone case explicitly ok. General case as I said will be an exercise ok. Uh, so, the small the squares here commute says that if you look at the vertical uh, vertical arrows the collection form form the complex G and the middle arrows here uh, vertical things form the complex C and the arrows commute is the same thing as saying the left from the complex G to the complex C is a map of complexes. So, we get this we observed earlier there is a map of homology from H i of G to H i of C there is a natural map which came from the map of complexes. Now, just observe that the last column is not, not the co complex f, but there is a minor modification which is that its indices have been shifted by 1. At the ith position of the new complex, okay, we have f i minus 1 and the maps are multiplied by minus 1. So, there is a shift in the indices and a multiplication by minus 1 in the maps. Okay, so, we will call this new complex f prime, just a notation. Okay. The observation that we need to make is h i of f prime is h i minus 1 of f. Okay. The kernel and image do not change if you multiply by minus 1 and all that we have done 
I mean, for while computing homology, only thing that we have done is just changing the indices. So, what homology we would have obtained at i minus 1 position, if we are treating it as f, we would now get it at i th position. Okay. So, now c to f prime is a map of complexes, and so we get a map uh, h i of c to h i of f prime, but remember that is h i minus 1 of f for every i. Okay. So, then one needs to check. Um, okay, so, this is just a, just a uh, sort of preliminary discussion. One has to check that if you take this map I mean, h i of g to h i of c to h i of f prime, it is exact at the middle part which is h i of c that we would not describe. It will come from the general, uh, general principle about short exact sequence of complexes giving long exact sequence of homology. So, uh, I we would not explicitly check in this lecture, but let us let us see how uh, the mapping, what specific thing happens in the mapping code. Okay, so, I have left some gaps to fill in elements here, we are going to do a diagram chase. Okay. Okay, so, now, so, let us go back, composing these two h i of g to h i of c to h i of f prime, okay, we get, we get something like this. Okay, the middle part is c, left one is g and right side is f prime. So, we get something like this. What we want is the switch from the ith stage to i minus 1 stage. So, h i of f prime to h i minus 1 of g. So, it is this map that uh, it is this map here that we are trying to construct uh, in the uh, what we will describe now. Okay. So, yeah. So, we need something to go from this homology here. Remember this f i is f prime of i minus 1 sorry f prime of i plus 1. Uh, so, from this point to this I mean the, the homology of the rightmost complex at this point at this point to the homology of the leftmost complex at this point okay, that is what we will need to construct. Okay. So, let us uh, let us take a b. So, we will do a diagram chase like uh, earlier. So, we will take let us take a b which is the kernel of f i kernel of f i same thing as kernel of minus f i. So, this b here goes to 0. Now, lift it to any a comma b. So, remember c i plus c i plus 1 is the direct sum of these two things. Okay. So, lift it to any a, a comma i plus b, uh, a comma b, where a is from g i plus 1 and b is whatever. So, it does not matter what a is, lift it here. Let us apply delta, let us let us come down to this map. Well, if you come down to this map, g gets applied to a because a came from this alpha gets applied uh, to b because alpha came from here, uh, b came from here okay. and then for the second summand, uh, I mean the second component f gets applied to b. Okay. So, what we have is g i plus 1 applied to a plus alpha i applied to b. So, I have just in this thing I have just to conserve some space I have just called it g a plus alpha b, but usually after a while keeping track of these indices unless there is a pressing need for it one does not I mean one understands that this is after applying the correct g in the correct degree. Okay. So, this is uh, g a plus c. So, we get an element here and remember that the map from I mean in the second factor the map is b going to f of b, but b is in the kernel of f. So, it is 0. Okay. So, one has this. Okay. In other words this element here came from g i. So, this is the element that we ok. So, from here we, we lift it arbitrarily, then we applied this map and then we got an element inside, inside g. Okay. If you apply if you apply the g map to this g a plus alpha b, we would get 0 because g uh, g i. So, this one can just check this is just a map two consecutive maps in a complex. And for this factor, one has to use that the diagram commutes. G i of alpha, G i alpha i f, uh, G i alpha i b is some alpha f b, but f b is 0. So, uh, one gets 0 here. So, in other words, what, what we have is, we have a well defined map from the kernel of f i to the homology at G i, not to the kernel, because the, the actual map depends on the choice of a. Ok. 
Okay, so there is no well defined map from kernel of fi to kernel of gi. There is a map to kernel of gi mod the image of uh, uh, okay, mod the image of g. So remember, okay, so one has to to make it a well defined map, R linear map, one has to uh, go modulo the image of gi. So this is the map kernel of fi to hi of g where b goes to alpha ib. Okay, so this is uh, okay. And this map does not depend on the choice of A because whatever if you chose an A prime here, if you do the same thing calculation here, you will get a different element here, but that different element will depend will be inside the image of gi plus 1. So, in the homology it will be the same element. Okay. So, one has to check that this is R linear etc which it is. Okay. So, now so now we got we get a map from kernel of f i to homology of alpha i which came through the through the map of complexes alpha. Okay, it is an element in the kernel to which the map alpha i is applied. Okay, so, this is what we have. Now, what we had wanted was from homology of f to homology of g. So, in order to do this we need to understand what happens to the image of the previous map. Okay, so, now suppose that b is actually the image for of the previous map. So, f i plus 1 minus f i plus 1 of b prime. Then one can just immediately check this alpha i of b is minus alpha i f i plus so this is just substituting this b prime, but alpha i f i plus 1 is I mean using that in here. So now we, one immediately sees that uh, uh, if uh, b is in the image of this, then alpha i b is in the image of g i plus 1. Okay. In other words, the image of this image of fi plus 1 inside this kernel here goes image of fi plus 1 is inside the kernel here goes to the image of this thing. So, inside the homology it is 0. So, hence we get a map from h i of f to h i of g given by alpha. Remember this is how the mapping homology was defined kernel goes to z I mean if you have an element b in the kernel we discuss we the map takes the class of b to the class of alpha i b and that is exactly what this map does. And now uh, so with this we have uh, established so let us just summarize given alpha map of complexes we have an exact sequence ok. So, let us just make sure we get this thing. So, this is uh, f i the homology here is h i h i of f homology here is h i of g. So, the map that we have constructed is from here to here ok and then we have this. So, h i plus 1 of c to h i of f to h i of g to h i of c and then so on ok. So, this is uh, how this thing comes. Now, we come to this point of defining causal complexes. Uh, so, we have a ring and some t elements in R. The Cauchul complex on F1, a single element, is the complex in which we put this at the first position and this at the 0th position, multiplication by F1. Okay. Inductively, let us assume that up to uh, uh, for i elements we have defined it. Okay. Now, multiplication by F i plus 1 gives a map of complexes, just, just a map of complexes. And the Cauchul complex on f1 through f5 plus 1 is a mapping cone of the above map of complexes. Okay, so, uh, so if there are two elements, and we will see in Macaulay how these things are constructed. So, now we define a map from rank 1 r module to rank 1 r module multiplication by x, and we ask is homogeneous 0, 0, and it says it is false. Okay, and the reason is both gen generators in both these modules, basis elements have degree 0, and hence multiplication by x will not preserve degree. It is just saying it is not a homogeneous map. So, we can make it homogeneous by giving uh, degrees like this. So, this is a free module of uh, rank 1 free module where a basis element has degree uh, where a basis element has degree 0. This is basic this is r minus 1. So, basic uh, uh, there is a basis in which the element has degree generator has degree 1 okay, and multiplication by x now preserves degree. Yeah, so let us just ask uh, uh, 
uh, what these things are r0 just a r module free r minus 1 is r module free degrees is 1 the generator degree is 1 we ask macaulay to construct the kozhul complex so kozhul complex is asked for a map so uh, kozhul of phi of phi of x was that multiplication by x so we call it kx okay. then we ask so this one these three commands will tell you uh, the zeroth uh, element in the complex the first element the module in the complex and the differentials in the complex the maps in the complex okay so it it says so it, it showed us this complex 0 and 1 it says the chain complex first module i mean zeroth module is zeroth module here is r1 free second module is r1 free but the generator degree is 1 okay and if you ask for its map it says this is the map okay so now we define similarly phi y okay, and we ask for kozhul we can ask for the kozhul complex okay so now mapping cones so now we need to uh, to shift we need uh, multiplication by y to be homogeneous okay so we can't use kx itself we need uh, we need to change its degrees okay Rem remember if multiplication by y has to be homogeneous then it has to be it has to come from r minus 1 to r0 okay so we shift we take kx itself but when we in order to be able to multiply by y we shift the degree and call it so the star star r minus 1 it has a correct interpretation in terms of tensor products but for us we will just treat it as shifting degrees okay so now uh, we get so we ask for kx1 so the first the zeroth module now is in degree 1 and the first module is in degree 2 generator is in degree 2 and the map is still multiplication by thing. and as i said for us kx star star uh, r to the minus 1 is just a way to change the degrees of the basis element okay Correct in, uh, yeah, so just one more. The one here that precedes x says that the target has degree 1, so the source has degree 2, okay, yeah, uh, so that's just, I'm just saying. Now let's try, so now this extend is a function which tries to extend uh, a map, a matrix as a map of complexes. So we want a map from kx1 to kx multiplication by y. That's what this one does okay and we ask okay so now it's a map of complexes in both factors it's multiplication by y okay and then we ask macaulay to construct its cone and we call the cone kxy okay so if you ask for kxy now it's cone of two elements and you know, one can inductively prove that the, the matrices in the i mean the modules in the kozhul complex are free modules zeroth module is just zero. First module is two copies remember it's in the it's from the diagonal there are two elements and after that both complexes end so there is only one in the next stage okay and so here it is degree 0 the uh, first module is 2 colon 1 which means two cop I mean, two generators of degree 1 and the second one the final one is degree 2 okay so that's those those are the commands and then we ask for the maps and these are the maps okay so when you work out the chain complex maps using the mapping cone one can see that these are the maps we can ask uh, so we here we also ask for its homology and prune is to minimize the number of generators and okay. so when you ask for its homology uh, it said it's a co-kernel of xy the middle one it said it's a sub quotient of this okay so in other words it's the uh, it's a sub module generated by this module of the image of this one and and when you ask for it to prune, uh, this this the, the first homology is zero. Okay, so one gets only one element. And let's just quickly look at it for three elements. Okay, so now we do the same thing. We take the complex k x y and then shift its degrees by one. Okay, so all that we have done is just shift its degrees. Okay, now take so the new complex was called k x y one. So get a map from k x y one to k x y multiplication by z. Then ask for its cone. And look at its uh, 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 look. So this is the uh, this is the extension. So this is shifted, and everywhere it's multiplication by z. Okay. So here there are two factors. So it's a two by two matrix. Okay. And then we ask for its cone. So we get something like this with one three three one, and we ask for its maps. 
this is what we get. If you did this by hand, we would get, I mean, depending on the sign conventions, we might get a slightly different with all different signs, but it would be uh, isomorphic to this. Okay. And so we can ask, so this is what we constructed by cone. We could have just asked Macaulay to construct the Kujul complex from the map to, the, so the generator here is in degree 0, three generators of degree minus 1 and they get mapped to x times this, y times this and z times this. Okay. Ask, we ask for its Kujul complex, we ask for its chain complex. So this, this sign, uh, I mean, it, it's a convention of how one is taking the tensor product. So this matrix is almost the same as this matrix except for some changes in sign, okay. but that's okay. And then finally, uh, one gets this. Yeah, that's the end of this lecture.